So if that bothers you, or I don't know. Okay. Here we go. All right. So we're gonna do luck. Thank you guys for showing up. This is gonna be a lot of fun. This is one lesson that I created last week, right before we started last week. So uh, it's the third in the series. I can keep doing these series over time, but what I've decided to do is I'm gonna do them online for a couple, because I'm involving people from all over the world to be able to join them. So I've got Wednesday and next Saturday. So if you wanna come into <coughs> either of those, probably the Saturday would probably fit you. You can do it over Zoom. If I'm, I have the link, just let me know and I'll get it to you. But the reason why I'm doing this is because the idea of the workshops was originally something that I and CFI, Center for Inquiry, have worked out to be able to start educating other groups on how to do workshops. Because it's not always possible to bring in speakers. So workshops are a re really great idea to stop having people like myself get up and lecture and allow you guys to come in and you guys do the work too. So thank you for being my guinea pigs because I've made this all up. This is all made up. All this is just made up out of whole cloth. So if anybody's responsible for it failing or anything, it's me. But that doesn't matter because I'm fine with that. But I have my notes on here, so I've got to keep looking at my notes to see what we're doing. So the two things that we really have to concentrate on is the goal is always to become the person that you want to have people come to whenever they have beliefs that are strange. That's our whole goal is to try to be kind with people and try to be able to um, elicit conversations with people who may not be heavy critical thinkers, but not people who are so far into the rabbit hole that they can't, you know, they're way down there. This is people who are, you know, kind of marginally having questions about things. And the question, and the thing that I ask you guys every time is, we want to make sure that we do not um, engage with somebody who has a belief that is an immediate harm today, this moment, that's going to have something that, that is going to be a problem. So give me a couple quick guys. To the whole crowd that is here, hey all you out there that can't be seen on the camera, give me some ideas. I think I'll go to Mexico for the treatment. I don't like our doctors. Well, I'm sure they have some good doctors over there, but... Actually, I don't want to do something. No, no, don't. Yeah. So, like, maybe, you mean, like, to go get your psychic surgery, isn't that what you mentioned yeah, last time? Yeah, psychic like surgery, surgery or, or, or laser, or, I mean, yeah. I'm from that era where people did that, things like that. Laser? So something dangerous like like something, something like get, not doing real medicine, but doing something you know, instead of like I'm gonna take homeopathy or I'm gonna take bleach, <laughs> inject bleach, <laughs> and, and, and having homeopathy is not really dangerous, right? No, it's it's avoiding doing something. It's avoiding, you know. yeah. You can take all the homeopathy you want, yeah. it might make your blood sugar go up if you're taking a sugar pill, but. Right. It's okay. I mean, it's not kind of. But yeah. I, I, okay. So, and the other question was that uh, I think I've hammered home enough. Is how much time do we have? Because you can't have conversations with people, long involved conversations like we're practicing with us in this group. You can't have those long conversations with people you meet on the elevator or you're, you know, or they're sitting next to you in the bus or, you know, you can't have long long conversations with them. But you can. These are these are what we're trying to do is trying to learn how to do these things with people you're going to have engage in conversations for over time. Co-worker, sibling. Yes, ma'am? I, I see it kind of like a, a revelation that you shared a long time ago with even someone who is way down some rabbit hole or whatever comment, and you just maybe make one comment to them indicating that, that you have a different take on something. And you don't have to argue with them, you don't have to have a long conversation, you don't have to do any of that, but they may go, oh, there are That may be all it would take for them to like start to be curious. It might take them another 10 years, but at least they've had like a, kind of an entry point a little bit. Like, oh, there are other humans that are like me out there, you know? Because they may have be in a culture where everybody thinks what they do. If they're in a bubble, no. Yeah, they're in a bubble. They're in a no. And, well, and if, you don't, if you don't offend them or frighten them, then you're, you're different than you could just kind of put out there. Like, oh, well, there's this too.
I have yeah. I'm typing. I'm on the two keys that I come with in the lower middle class area, so I have to go to that. But our internet was crap. It was like, well, they didn't want to go to the service there, but I've heard other people do it in the middle class area. Oh, you don't have to tell them the truth. Our internet is great. We have safe service. It's great. It's like a lot of people are sheltered. A lot of people live in a little tiny bubble. And they don't understand. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about other atheists I was talking to. And they would make this comment like, you know, we need to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. It absolutely is true. Um, you remember the story that I won't go into, but when I was 19, I'd never, I was raised religious, I didn't know anything about atheism. As far as I knew, I'd never heard the word atheism before until at the age of 17 in my homeroom class, the teacher pledged allegiance to the flag and skipped the under God part. And, and, and I asked her, well, why did you skip that? Did you forget it? And he goes, no, I'm an atheist. I'm like, well, what's that? And then when he said that, it was like, what? You can not believe in a religion? I thought you had to believe in a religion. I didn't realize there was a default. But like you said, you never know what might trigger something. It might take a while. So don't just, yeah, so some people who be in rabbit holes, absolutely, they may be approachable. But today, we're going to do something that might be the spark that will do this. Because we're going to talk about luck. So, luck. This is such an interesting topic. Did you anybody do the readings? Did ever do the reading? I didn't find the links. Oh, they're on our website. It was a little tricky to get to the well, Facebook page anyway. Yeah, I managed yeah, to do it. Website. Well, the, our website, MaureyCountySkeptics.org, or about timeproject.org, or season or whatever. Anyway, don't worry. If you haven't read it, you want to read it afterwards because it's so interesting. What do you think, Deborah? I, I, I thought it was The link to uh, the luck article? Yeah, because I, I took it right out of the Oh. And then, so then he, he went and found it. Did you read it? He was reading it. I don't know. It's, it's an, it's a, he wrote a whole book on it. Trying to help him. So it's Richard Weissman, who's a friend of ours, uh, a psychologist in uh, Scotland. Magician. Magician. A prolific writer, prolific magician, does all sorts of amazing things. Great accent. Oh, and his accent. Richard, if you're watching this, the accent. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so he's done a lot of things in our community. He's also a fellow of CSI like I am. So um, he's a just an amazing person. He was at PsyCon. We were at PsyCon this, yeah. this last uh, October. Anyway, so Richard Weissman had, did a, has done a 10-year study on the idea of luck. And what he discovered, I thought was so interesting, all the things he discovered. We're going to go through it again right now whenever we go um, into this lesson. But before I get that far, I want to ask you, how do you guys feel about luck? Are you, would you say, and now that you've read the article, Deborah, you might not want to go last because it may influence you how you answer the question. So, Derek, what do you think? Would you say you're a lucky person? You know, actually, when you asked this last week, my, my instinct was to say, like, no or be you. And then I heard Deborah say, in retrospect, yes. And I kind of go with, in retrospect, yes. Because I, I do feel like I've dodged several bullets, even if I haven't had good fortune rain on me. You're not a billionaire or anything, right? Right. Okay, well, but you know what? I don't even know if I'd consider being a billionaire lucky. What's a billionaire? Huh? What did you say? Billionaire. Oh, billionaire. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if that would be like a millionaire. Cool. But <laughs> a billionaire... That's like another job, that's right? Yeah. And then you have to worry about being kidnapped and all that stuff. But that's just like a worry about your personal relationships and avoiding all the people who, who want to latch on to you. Oh, yeah. This room would be packed, and they'd all be there with their hand out like this. Yeah. <laughs> but I was a billionaire. So you'd say you're lucky when you're looking back on it in perspective. You think you've had a pretty lucky life. Yeah. Okay. Cindy? Um... I would say sometimes it feels like I'm fighting some people. Because it, it, it got to the problem is bad. Sometimes like uh, fortunate things just seem to happen when you're when I'm having a bad time, but some fortune comes along and then sometimes it's like I'm never going to forget about it. <laughs> so it is a mixed bag. Okay. Mark? I think I've been very lucky. Up and Other than that, absolutely. 
live the charmed life. Uh, I wouldn't say it's charmed, it's true. You know, love to me is hard work and plan. Oh, you're going to define it differently than all the others. It's like the goose in, in uh, Charles Webb. Yeah, <laughs> Nothing to do with this. It was hard work. Is that what the goose says? Something like that. It didn't, it didn't just happen, but I would say that in retrospect, I've had very good luck. You did ever when you think. Now that you've read their article on your I told the bias somewhere. No, I think what Cindy says is very honest, because if you look at it, what, like, what kind of your life's segments or something, you can look at it like, oh, that time period was, that sucked. And then this part of it was really great. And But I think looking, first of all, if you're, if you're here, and you're looking back on your life, that means you're here. You can tell it's happened to you. You're still alive. And, you know, you made it this far. You yeah. made it this far. So the reason why I decided on the block <laughs> is because, again, the converse, what we're trying to do with these workshops is to become the person that people come to when they have questions about things that are odd or weird, and they know that you're going to talk to them in a non-judgmental way, without rolling your eyes, without crossing your arms, without putting your hands on your hips, <laughs> which is what I always do, and um, encourage discussion and encourage them to be able to come back again and again. So. We had, at the beginning, we started talking about pre-bunking versus debunking. If somebody want to give me a definition of debunking. Debunking. Show them evidence of what they believe in correct. So somebody has a belief. Strongly in it, and you take Deborah's definition of you, you confront them with, I mean, not confront them, but you show them something that you think is evidence. How do you think it feels to the person who's, who has that belief? You say, it's like when you're playing a card game, and you're like, you play that magic card, and you're playing it, and you're like, boom, hey, dude, you don't have, you know, we have a reversal. I win. Or I win, sorry, I debunked you. How do you think it feels if you're the person who has the belief? And, I don't know, alien hair dryers or whatever it is we talked about the first lesson. And then somebody says, here, dude, you're wrong. Is the other You have to replace it with some information. It's compassionate. They don't just cut their throat and you don't believe. So, I'm having a, mo a moment of thinking. No, um, okay. Replace it with something. Have some compassion, he said. And that's very important to have compassion about it to the person. So debunking has value, right? No. No? I think no. sometimes it does. I think, I think it does if it's 
already been played out in the courts or you know, has had some traction with, with uh, the courts or the law. They debunked them. They said, here's your evidence. Yeah. There's no there was was civil leaders. In fact, there was that politician who, who uh, a politician who lost his election. He was like, the ghost shoot of all the Democrats. Oh, the guy. Darren, what he says, said there's still a lot of people who cannot convince, no matter what the evidence is. Because always why? Say because they probably essentially believe everything right. is Everything. Pre-bunking, I mean, on debunking, how does it feel to have somebody come up to you and say, you're wrong, here's the evidence, how do you think it would feel to that person who's invested in whatever you believe was, and now... to where we were going. Thank you, Jennifer, for that segue. That was beautiful. Without you knowing, we were, know we were, were going into segue. Okay. And the segue is, is that depending on the person you're talking to, obviously just flat out debunking whatever it is they believe in is probably not going to be a very successful conversation. I would say that debunking is valuable if it's if if somebody started to question their beliefs. And they, if, like you said, you see the W is actually two VEs, maybe that person's going to start questioning something and they'll say, well, I wonder what else there is about this. And they will go and they'll find the things that are being debunked. So if they go and they find Nick West's videos on, on uh, UFOs that, you know, they, they, they're already starting to question a little bit, they can go and find the video and then they say, oh my gosh, I hadn't thought of it this way. But you kind of need to do it in a way when you're having these conversations with people so that they feel like they're invested in that they did, they're not done, they figured it out. Like, let them save face, right? Because you don't have them. Yeah, it's not good. I know how silly, but whatever. So, so don't say anything, you guys. Starting it back up. Okay. I'm going to lie again. So what we want to do is we want to have good conversations with people. That's the goal. So I picked luck because I think it's a safe topic that we don't even know a lot about. We probably haven't really thought about before ourselves so much. So I think that if you have a long-term relationship with somebody, a coworker, a loved one, um, you know, a sibling of some sort, and you know that you're going to be interacting with them a lot. I think a topic like life might be a safe topic to, to bring up. You could use whatever excuse you want to use, like, I saw this video, I read this article, I was overheard this sportscaster talking about luck and stuff like that, and, and then bring it up to them in a way so that you can have a good, you guys don't, can't see what I'm saying, 
there's cats constantly running back and forth behind you, and then they're climbing up on the fence and, and walking back, and then jumping on the house behind you, and you can't see it because I didn't make it up, I swear. There are cats that keep running back and forth behind us. It's really funny. Is it one of those no, it's a black and white, and there's a brown one, and can't even, I don't know. <laughs> so, with, where was that? Okay, having a conversation about luck should help us out. Because remember the very first lesson, Darren, you weren't here for this. The very first lesson uh, we did on um, three weeks ago, we talked about not having the same language when we're talking to somebody who isn't on the same path we are. They, they may the have, definitions. yeah, the definition. So they may say, that uh, theory means something, and then we think theory means something, and then whenever you're starting to talk about that subject, it doesn't make any sense, because they're, we're not even on the same page as far as the words. We're yes, we're all speaking English, but... Just misunderstanding each other, because they're using different words. Right, we're, walking, we're talking past each other, exactly. So I think luck might be a really safe topic to bring up and talk about with somebody, and then when you're talking with them, Hopefully, it's going to create an environment where you're going to be able to have conversations with them about all sorts of other stuff because you've already had this nice, safe conversation, allowing them to save face. So that's what we're going to do with luck today. I'm going to look at my little notes really quick because I have them here and I need to make sure I use them on a different page. Okay. Make sure I didn't skip anything. All right. Um, Okay, so the definition of luck, this is where we are. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, we're going to sum up the Richard Weissman article. So hopefully you remembered it really well. Um, I have very few slides. Very few. And I like it that way because it's all supposed to be about a discussion. If we were just looking at slides, you might as well stay home and watch a video. All right, why do you think people are lucky or unlucky? Deborah's laughs because she read the article. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think? Why do you think a person would be? Not you, but like people. Because they have poor self-image, self-esteem. They don't, uh, they don't recognize uh, when good things happen, necessarily. Okay. Depressed. Darren, what do you think? Well, I mean, I'm going to separate luck out from what Mark was saying. So, like, if someone's depressed or has poor self
that just you never get what you want, even though you look at them and you go, oh my goodness, they have no the technicality. So I think it's the two things, it's an objective, whatever it is they have, don't have, get, don't get, and then the most personal experience of it, which is the opposite. Well, I think these are Yeah, you're getting into it there. Okay. okay. I didn't so, want to jump there. Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm listening to you guys. I want something in this page. Okay. There, okay. Richard Weissman has four principles of what luck is. Okay. So, he's done this 10 year stir survey, and it's very interesting. I'll have to read about it. I'm not going to go over it too much in detail. But there are four different skills. All right. So, this is going to change your life. All right. Here we go. Number one, they are skilled at creating, and people who are lucky, they are skilled and noticing, oh wait, they're skilled at creating and noticing chance opportunities. So they are able to take opportunities, they see and they uh, realize there's an opportunity in front of them and they're able to see it and take it and go with that opportunity. Instead of just being, the same old day, the same old routine, the same old this, and when an opportunity presents themselves, they go, nah, I'd rather stay home and watch Netflix, right? Okay, that's not taking an opportunity. And that opportunity could be going to a party, or it could be um, uh, sitting at a table that has a lot of people at it, instead of sitting at a table off in the corner where you're not interacting with people, it could be anything. Okay, number two, make, they make lucky decisions by listening to their intuition which is really kind of an interesting thought, because intuition, what does that mean? Somebody can give me a definition of intuition. Intuition is knowing something, but not knowing how or why. How you know it, why you know it. But it feels like, an example of it would be what? Mm -hmm. Well, like, there's a, a stranger approaches you, and you get this, if you get this at it, it's got to go back out of something. And it turned out, that's why I avoided him. I avoided this guy, and then I find out he's a serial a killer. And somebody that he started engaging somebody else, and then he hurt that person. He raped that person, and left that person, or something. But because I avoided engaging with him, I avoided that. Like going down a dark alley at night by yourself to take a shortcut? Your intuition says, probably not a great idea. I think our, our brains have, some of us, like lower brains, like, you know, you see a snake on the ground and, and you know it's a snake, even if you don't know it's a snake, and even if it's not a snake, but... Whoa! Yeah, oh, I thought it was a snake. Oh, it's an unspoken knowledge. Yeah, but there's also it's things that... It's a feeling. Yeah. There's things that you know. You just don't, you haven't, you don't have time to analyze it. Yep. If there's things you know that you don't know, you don't realize, realize you know. that you know, you're not okay. It's not awareness and consciousness. It's kind of it's just there either from your experience or education or you know movie that you watch. I mean, so anything like that. It's all in there, rattling around. You just you're, not, sick. you're not thinking about it all the time. But then something will happen, and, and it seems like magic sometimes. That you like, I didn't. You know, how did I know that was a good thing or a bad thing? Well, remember last week when we did the false memory lesson? And I gave you all those words and that all had were similar about a chair. And then you realized that the word chair was never mentioned. When I said, go back and think about what words are there, your brain filled in the word chair. Because our brains are trying to make quick decisions and get us through, yeah. you know, because our brains are very complicated and, yeah. and so on. So yeah. you're absolutely right. So, yeah. so intuition can be just like for Daniel Kahneman right there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Who? Daniel Kahneman. Oh yeah, thinking fast and slow. I haven't read it, but I know what you're talking about. I don't know him. Okay, so the other one is number three. This is the other, the third one for what um, Richard Weissman has discovered with his research on luck is create self-fulfilling prophecies via positive expectations. I can't remember what that means. Let me tell you what that means. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds good. I don't remember what the examples were. I mean, it sounds like having optimistic but reasonable goals for yourself, like do you believe that you can achieve something and then doing that? Okay, I will go with that. That sounds like a great definition. Thank you. <laughs> Number four is 
Adopt a resilient attitude to transform bad luck into good. That's attitude. Mm -hmm. Main takeaway, yeah. That's exactly right. It's your attitude. So, and Deborah's hit on this when she was talking about the truck because she cheated and she did the homework assignment. So she, <laughs> she knows. That wasn't an example. From the yeah, so we're going to look at, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the, um, we're going to look at the slides. So, how do we get this to make, like, oh, you're asking me. Yeah. Can yeah. we jump in on three and sure. four? They're, they're like flip sides of, I think, what I'm saying is that well-adjusted people tend to like internalize success and externalize failure. Like, if I did something or if I got something good, that's because of me and my hard work. If something bad happens to me, that's because of things outside of my control. They. Yeah, they. They the other. They. Yeah, and that, that to me is like three and four there that you're saying that like three is I have this expectation that I'm going to do well and now I do well and look at me, I work hard. And then, but if there are hiccups along the way or it doesn't work out, then that's beyond my control. Okay, so you learn a lot because you didn't prepare yourself. Yeah. You didn't prepare yourself. And you have to recognize that. that I failed because of nope. huh. Not because of what somebody else did. Not because it was beyond my control. Because I really didn't expect that well that night. Even though I thought my video. Did that video? No, it shot. I, I didn't take the platform in the home and then passed on. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh we did it. Oh. Probably. Yeah. Because. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
so many of these and I couldn't even, I couldn't even watch them. I was like, oh, this is just impossible. This is so, so t- some of these were so terrifying. I assume this is sped up. I don't know. A little bit. I, I remember watching this thing at the air and this was her one. Did her hands are off? And then yeah. it comes by. I think she oh, the car is just, it's on the dirt. That's why they call it yeah. dust. Yeah. It just went right up on the, on the dust. And she, she goes back. she heard it in no idea. I think her first instinct was I think it was already too late. Yeah. And you saw that's what happened. Okay. So one of the things that Richard Weissman says in the book is and turn this way so I can actually read it easier. Before it was easier when I had it all written on a little post-it pad and I could just look at it. Now I have it actually written down here. Technology. Technology, yeah, yeah. it's so good. Okay, so the main takeaways are your thoughts and your behaviors are mostly what's uh, tied to your fortune. It's how you look at it. It's how your perception of it. It's how it's framed. Unlucky people are generally, this is a general statement, are gen- genuinely more tense, more anxious than lucky people. Anxiety disrupts people's ability to notice the unexpected. In other words, you can change your luck by how your, percep- how your perception is. By taking drugs, they <laughs> so we're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about those those three videos you said. Now, frame it from a perception, Cindy. Frame it from the perception of that woman who went under the guard thing like this to cross the road. Frame it from the perception of she's telling you I'm unlucky. Now tell me what she would say. I am really unlucky because... Oh, well, what is it like? I mean, t- tell me more. she did that was so unlucky? Or what was what was the cosmos doing to her to make her so unlucky? <laughs> well she wasn't paying it well well she wasn't paying attention, right? She went under the guardrail, like that's that's a significant The guardrail was down for a reason, right? She had like a whole story. I would think she said, well I wasn't paying attention. That fits that criteria we were she saying. Know that's something she could call. to get to my other bus or I'm going to be late and then the babysitter is going to have the bus be double and you know on and on. They're going to make up all these excuses of why it wasn't their fault. And why it was unlucky. And it was unlucky. I am so unlucky because I almost made the train. train was in the way and, then and it was the bus before that and it was my boss was yelling at me and it was blah blah blah. Okay, so give me give me an example of how that woman could come out of this saying, God, I was lucky. I'm with you too, Mark. Because she's alive. <laughs> but how could she say it? Give me the word she would say. If you're that woman and you said, see the cat? See the cat? Yeah, I'm not making it up. There are cats. There's one, he's over here now. One over there. It's a white one this time. Why, is it, why would the woman, how would she say she was lucky? Because she didn't get hit by the train. I would say she, she might say, I looked up just in time to see that train coming out of the way of that train. If I hadn't looked up, I would have she might have also said, why did no, uh, for the unlucky part, she might have said, why didn't anybody tell me? Yeah. There's all those people standing there. They Nobody said, <laughs> what are you doing? Grab her and pull her back or something? Well, there was a guy you, you might not have seen. He went yeah, through he the walked, other side yeah. first. But she had to. I mean, he was on the track. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an unlucky name. <laughs> well, he was on the wrong side of the pole, but it looked like he was close enough that he probably didn't get hit. But we don't know. So the oh, that's true. He could have gotten hit. And she comes out, and what I thought was interesting is when she gets out and she, she realizes that she almost got hit, she goes over and embraces like somebody. <laughs> She's like this holding up to somebody afterwards, like, I didn't know you before, but man, we're close friends now. <laughs> so depending on her perspective, that was either a lucky or an unlucky event, right? You guys agree with me? She could sprain it either way. If she almost got hit by train, is unlucky, or I didn't get hit by train, is lucky. Okay, so go to the next one, which was the people in the cars that are going down the road innocently, and all of a sudden a bunch of houses <laughs> try to attack them on the road. I know, like, gosh. Traffic. <laughs> why, why would that be unlucky? For any of the drivers, what would they say? If, if this is the same event that I'm thinking it was, they probably were unlucky, because I don't think most of them got away. But they got away just then. For the video. For the video, as far as the video is concerned, yeah. I would say they're lucky, because maybe there was no event point on the radio saying there's a going to be a mudslide or big warm slide here. They warned them not to get that route, and then they saw it just on the time, and they weren't going to have a road to get to you. Right, there wasn't Honestly, anybody in the way. Or yeah, there wasn't anybody in the way watching them. They were probably saying, I don't know what just, I just missed out. No one at all it was coming. Yeah. And I saw it in time. Who would who would be who would have even considered I'm driving down the road, minding my own business, listening to something on the radio, and all of a sudden houses are starting to come into the road. Your your stuff would look so I'm out there saying, avoid this road. Well, yeah, it's getting flooded. The, the factor is that we're assuming there's no public service. Yeah, we're assuming. For them to be lucky, right? If, if they have the metaphorical equivalent of the arm go down, yeah. like don't travel to this area, and then you but the thing is, you know, it's like more than one car. Yeah. So they, yeah. either they weren't listening to the white radio Or there wasn't station. time. <laughs> I, if, I had, if I had exited, I'd be honking at all the cars that were coming towards me. And so. But, you know, some things, I think, um, one of the things about natural disasters is that you know, something can happen in the uh, public service people who you want to call them. just don't have enough time to warn you about it. Yeah. Like, Right, and you might not even think it's that area that you're driving. Now, another way these people can be unlucky. It's like it just happened and they're not, you know, but new about it. Yeah. So another way that could be very unlucky is they may have been trying to get home, and the house that was coming to greet them <laughs> might have been their home with their family in it. So that could be very unlucky. Yeah. But they survived. So maybe they are lucky because they managed to get out. Little bit of and their family is unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, they're pets. Right? But then again, they might have rode it out. I don't know. Some of those houses look like they were still in loading shape. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So depending on how you, you your perspective is, that could be luck. You just missed it. I mean, that's like by the skin of your teeth. Some of those cars, I was like, what? Okay, going back to the third one. So the woman with the with the baby yeah. stroller. Lucky, lucky, unlucky, lucky. That's like a half a baby step further, and she would have had that baby's. Thing, the, uh, yeah. the now our baby's just dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that lucky dirt or unlucky dirt? She probably doesn't wash it for a week. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I think she might have said lucky because that was a virus that out of control. She probably wouldn't have even seen it coming because he might have, might have just went out of control at the last second. And maybe he was trying to avoid something else. Or he was just going too fast and couldn't make it turn in one. Absolutely. Probably happened with that or past. Again, like so you're driving, you're walking along, you're not thinking, I'm on the totally way into the sidewalk. I'm not thinking, hmm, maybe a car is going to come on the road. <laughs> it doesn't even dawn on you. There was one video in here that I didn't show you guys that uh, I thought was interesting, but it went a little too long. But it was a, a man was at the gas, it was a gas station, camera on a gas station, and this man's at his, he's filling up his car. And all of a sudden, on the other side of the gas station, a car comes along and crashes into the gas station. And it starts to go on fire. So, unlucky, right? Well, it is lucky because he crashed and he couldn't get out of his car door because of the way it hit the, um, the gas pump. Yeah, the pumps and everything. But the luck was 
The guy who was filling up with gas was an ex -police, was a police officer off duty, and he managed to go over to that car and drag the person out. And so, so the way it was lucky. So it was lucky and unlucky. If you're going to have an accident, probably do it in front of somebody who probably knows how to handle emergencies and stress. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, fire, yeah. So if I'm going to run into this, yeah. But that's the idea I'm trying to say is that some things, it just depends on your perception of what we consider luck. And that's what Richard Weissman's kind of saying, is that we all have this idea that you frame it that way. Okay, let's see. It's the first time I'm doing this. So. Hang in the audience. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, what was it we done early today? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, the last kind of thing. We're going to talk about luck again. And uh, just in the, now that you have a little more idea of what, how, luck is hard to define, right? Because we, when you guys were going around the room and talking about luck, you were defining it with magical words, kind of. You were kind of saying things that were, um, work. Well, no, no, random and, and things like that that's hard to predict. Uncontrollable, uncontrollable, you don't have any way of making it happen or not happen. There's a lot or of magical you, thinking involved. You get yourself in a bad situation and you're like, I'm going to make it out of it. But suddenly, that's unfortunate. I mean, that you hadn't planned on, you hadn't worked for. It just comes along and now you're out of that bad situation. Right. Like, like um, or, yeah. or, okay, I'll give this example that. I was thinking, well, one time I, I got this letter from Jerry Duty. I had not told him I can't come in. I think that he wants to come in. I think I got it kind of late. I found it kind of late because my not in time mailbox, to tell him no. Yeah, yeah, my mailbox was, you know, kind of walk half a block. So I lived in a large apartment complex. And it felt like I had to walk half a block, so I didn't check my mailbox every day. But I went to work on, on that desk. However, we had one of our problems come in. Everything was flooded. Nobody was going to say anything. Everybody was saying this is lucky or I'm like, what, what the heck? You had a tropical storm, so you got a jury duty. Yes. And you forgot to tell them that you had jury duty. Right. So they weren't expecting you might even show up. <laughs> and to me, I love jury duty. I would love to get on a jury. I haven't been on since I was 18, and I can't, they will never pick me. Pick me, pick me, pick me! I think the trick, I, I, I don't know if this is true, but the only time I've ever actually got to be on a jury, and I agree with you, I like doing it. Oh, I think it's fascinating. Um, yeah. Was, Love watching it. In 2019, I got a summons that was for jury duty at the same time as Cyclone. And so I wrote him back and said, I can't do that. I'm going to be seeing Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm sorry. No, this was the, uh, uh, he wasn't that one. But anyway, <laughs> so, but you, do, you can do that, you can put it off. Yeah, you can't. Once. Yeah, once. Yeah, once. Right. So, because I put it off once, I don't know if this is true, but it seemed like it. When I went in for the actual time, which was in December, I was up in the very beginning of the list. It was like it moved me up because, well, you, you bailed out last time, so now you're at the head of the line. So, and I got to be yeah, out there. Well, you, got, you got called? Yeah, I got called, and I got to send the jury, and I was, I was at alternate for a little while. And Well, the one they, I mean, they were, but they were real. Remember the one we just had in Salinas just the other day? The yeah. murder of, of the San Luis Obispo woman? Yeah. Caspian was almost on that. Yeah. Except My friend they, Betsy almost was on They got that him too. off like three three people ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah, it, but it's like, I mean, I was just going to say, they probably can't be a friend of Carl's off because he wasn't going to be a piece of the No, no. I mean, she actually made it out of the jury and then during the one year Maybe not. Maybe yeah, that's probably that's probably why they said it's a test. Yeah. Okay, so the men on this side of the room over here, I just realized you've segregated yourself. <laughs> I sat here first. Well, second half of the time. So the guys sat next to each other. Okay. So you guys have an example, a quick example you can give of luck or unluck. Luck or unluck? 
yeah, something lucky that happened in your life, something unlucky. Then can you frame it the opposite way so that it was the opposite of what you think? Ooh. Like a tropical storm. <laughs> yeah, like a tropical yeah. storm. <clears throat> yeah. Can you think of something? Darren, can you think of something? You luckily met somebody that you love so much? No, I was in a I was in a emergency landing. Past your time there, it was it was like a TV yeah, show, a cop show. No, 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 way before your time, it was a very popular. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't that popular. It was Robert Blake and, and the guy who did the animals on it. I worked for him. He, he was uh, Ray Berwick. He did all the birds and the birds. I remember what oh. was on that. So Can we see the bird? I'll take a shot. I have to have it. <gasps> oh, okay, so we're, we're ending this now.
but we won't charge you extra for that bit of wisdom from him, okay? See. All right, so. See, by the same logic, okay, let me just turn this up. Okay. Written in the Neil deGrasse Tyson book, he says, no psychic has ever won the lottery twice, that's, ever. That's exactly it. So. Because it's hard. You're saying that, <laughs> that it still could happen, though. Of course. Yeah. There are a lot, maybe not psychics, but there are other, there are people who want to You showed the numbers and it was like one in four quadrillion or something. Right, but that's what it was before. Right, yeah. so so the odds of winning the lottery are really, really, really not good odds. Well, you know. But the odds of somebody winning the lottery are very good. Yeah. Anyway. So predicting who will win. That's luck story. Okay. Uh, Thank you. That was, a, that was a very good bad luck story. Thank you. I don't know if you know a bird competition. Bird, yeah, bird. Uh, bird trainer. Bird trainer, yeah. Bird bit me right here on my chin. You had to wrestle a bear. Birds are nasty. <laughs> that was one of his first assignments, the best wrestle a bear. I didn't give this bird the peanut that he earned right when I, after he'd done what he was supposed to do. He would latch on me. Okay, so we're going to go. That's to, bad luck. We're going to go to the next slide, and actually, this next slide I think is almost my last slide. So, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set this up. If you want to go to it, then I will kind of explain it a second. I mean, should there be okay. Dr. Dennis. Right. right. Yeah. So this is Richard Weisman. Don't hit. Don't hit anything yet. So Richard Weisman has been. Uh, this, this is a really low quality. I figured it'd be easy to steal it off the internet. It's such a low quality. No one could ever complain. And I chopped that. So he's been, um, a TV channel has been following him around and they've been talking to him about this book, The Luck Factor, which has been out for 11, 12 years. Yeah, it's, been it's been a while, yeah. So it's, it's, it's been out. That article. So, so he's being followed around and he's explaining what luck is and from his perception. Maybe and he's taking a reporter from a TV show. Oh, you know, okay. so he's been, and they've been, what he did is he, uh, remind me if this is right. So one of the things Richard Weissman did is they recruited a whole bunch of people who say they're lucky. Or extremely unlucky. lucky. Or extremely unlucky. Yeah, he did a magazine or a newspaper magazine ads. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that. Yes, in fact we should talk about it before this. Because I mean, they're the same people. Okay, so here's what Richard Weissman did. One of the things that he says is that people who are... <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm assuming this one has sound. Yes, this one will have sound. So who knows if, if, if it doesn't, then I will have to explain it to you. Uh, no, I won't have that. We marketed the accent. He knows some stuff. No, you'll see that in the very distinct accent. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so what Richard Weissman did is one of his tenets of the four things he says is that people who are really lucky tend to observe things. And they are, um, they, you know, you're not stressed. You're not, uh, what were the things they said that people who are in stress, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety they're un, they tend to be, un, uh, they tend to be so focused on what their task is that they're unlikely to notice the other things around them. And that's what he says, um, well, is a part of the difference between luck and unluck. So if you are paying attention and listening to directions, but, and trying to follow the directions, and you're so focused on it, you probably, like you're thinking, okay, can't forget this line that I'm about to say, and you miss something else that's happening around you, like a car is coming at you. But if you have, if you are more open to new things, if you're more like, hmm, I'm kind of going to walk in this room and observe the room, then sit down, you're more likely to have better luck. This oh, is basic. situational awareness. Situational yeah. awareness. I will not be. Okay, so what he did is he gave a bunch of people who said they were very lucky or very unlucky a newspaper. A newspaper, a magazine. Yeah. It's a magazine. One of the two. Okay. And he handed it out to all the people and he says, All right, so here's your instructions. I want you to go through the magazine and count how many pictures are in the magazine. And so the people would go through the magazine and they'd start going through and they start counting their pictures. But then what actually happened is on like you open the thing up, there's a big ad, no picture, big ad that said, Stop counting. There's 43 pictures. 43 pictures in this in this magazine. And so people who said they were very lucky saw that ad and stopped. And people who said, who had told him, I'm really unlucky, 
would go through and count the pictures. So they didn't pick up on the fact that there was this big sign in front of them saying, hey, stop, don't count. Here's, you know, they picked up on it. So he's saying they're more likely to find lucky situations. And for example, uh, people in the, in the uh, article that we're reading, they found, um, like they had this one woman they interviewed and in this, in this uh, video that I'm not going to show you, but she was so positive. Pollyanna, this is what they call me as a Pollyanna, uh, everything is just like, oh, that's so wonderful. I, you know, uh, the good side of things, the woman, she, she'd fallen down, she said, if I fell down and broke my leg, people, well, some people would say that's bad luck. She said, no, that'd be good luck because I could take time off from work and I could watch Netflix, I could watch, read books or whatever. And she, she looked at it in a positive sense. And that's what they said is the people who tend to say that they're very lucky tend to feel like they see the, they see the almost. Oh, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. What was the other example they gave about the people who are Olympic uh, winners? Oh, the, yeah. yeah, they've got gold, they silver, silver medal. They got the ones that got bronze. We're happier than the ones that got silver. Right. right. Because the ones that got bronze would go, well, I got a medal. Because you just you got right on the podium. And the people that won silver were like, if I'd done a little bit better, I could have had gold. They were, they were, they had a completely different look, a way of looking at it. Yeah. Them. Two positions that are basically the same, really, most in most events. Very, very little. Right, so that's exactly right. So it just, it's the way they frame it. And if uh, people who are more likely to go out of the way to go do something unusual, that's another example you gave. Um, when, you're, when you're invited to a party, go to the party. You're more likely to meet somebody. Can I give my favorite example sure. from that? Because I just I really both of them. You said that um, the, to, in order to increase your chances of having lucky interactions with another person, I'm not sure why this works this way, but he said, take a different route to work or wherever you normally go, go by a different way, like every day or something. And then the other one that I really like was, okay, you're going to a party. Instead of just talking to the same kind of people, and we, I think we sometimes know the kind of people we like to talk to, so make a deal with yourself that you're only going to talk to people wearing blue or red or black. You know, that you just you know, focus, just to, to randomize your opportunity just to talk to a person without judging how they, you know, how they present to you. Like their, their age or their, their age whatever, or their yeah. face or whatever like that. And just kind of randomize it a little bit. And do it. I love, I love those. That, those are great examples. He, he talks about how trying to just, like you said, if you're going to, if you're going to um, tend to do the same thing all the time and you make excuses for yourself why you shouldn't go to the party or you shouldn't do these things, instead of looking at it as an opportunity to go meet, like if you're in a situation where you'd like to meet new people, you'd like to make friends, you'd like to have another love partner or something like that, putting yourself in a situation is more likely to get it so that you will find that person, right? Yeah. So, you know, like Cindy is a great example of this. She moved to an area, she doesn't know anybody, she joins a meetup and starts hanging out, you know, going to the meetups, you know, what a, what a concept. <laughs> That's unlucky. <laughs> but it is, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of, when you take chances, um, you're more likely to find that the situation benefits you where you're lucky. Mark met no, Mark Cruz. Uh, food? Food? No, no. Plus, it's most sense. But Mark, Mark. You were street food in third world countries. I'm not eating food. I'm eating food. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have milk that's in the bar. That was a high five. Oh, thank you. Stop. No, 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 no. We're, we're on the same page on that particular yeah. Yeah. Computer. But Mark, Mark and I met on a cruise, right? Yes, we did. Totally, and totally. I, I had a premonition I was going to meet somebody before I went. I was like, why did you buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm his lottery ticket. At that point in my life, I was just recently divorced, so I was kind of. If you don't go, you're going to always wonder what might have happened. That kind of thing. It's okay. just, again, the same sort of, you know. Just go. They're paying your way. You're going to need somebody. You don't know. I don't know who, I didn't know who it was going to be or what it was going to be about. And there she was. 
I call it dibs on him. <laughs> he likes that. Okay, so this is Richard Weisman. He is, it's a, vi it's a video that was much longer. You can find it on the internet. I've clipped the very end of it. Now, he's been walking around with the same uh, reporter throughout the whole different segment in okay, the whole video. And now this is the very end of it, and Richard Weisman's got something he wants to do to play a trick on this guy. So here we go. <coughs> You have to step back and say, is, is, is this person putting it on? That's the way she sees the world. She realizes that these things could be worse. And of course, it's a coping mechanism. But it's one which will allow you to move forward rather than stay where you are. It's one of his major conclusions. Positive people virtually all describe themselves as lucky. Dr. Wiseman has summarized his research findings about lucky and unlucky people in a new book, The Luck Factor in which he also has some exercises for changing your luck. People are not born lucky. We are creating our own luck by the way we think and the way we behave. Finally, in our last day at Dr. Wiseman's Lucky Lab, yours truly got a lesson in navigating with eyes wide open. It'll be a, a huge opportunity and staring them right in the face, and they simply don't see it. And it's, it's just fascinating to see what's happening there. And after you get the gag, you say, how could they not see it? Exactly. We've actually put people's names on. You know, something would be so sort of high Dennis, spot this and win a thousand dollars, and it could be massive on a big sheet of paper, and they simply won't see it. Just don't get it. You're just blind to it. You're just blind to these sorts of opportunities. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> it's a lesson in luck. I have to work. I'm not only defeated, I'm humiliated. <laughs> oh! That's cute, isn't it? That was great. So that, this is what he's trying to say: is that if you're so um, that, well, like you said, positive people tend to create their own luck. So if you have the mentality of looking at it like, it could have been worse, but this happened to me, you know, this, this thing that could have been bad luck, I, I feel like it could have been worse. Now, you, you put a new spin on it, and it can make you look in a positive way at, at, at things around you. You feel like you've had more, better luck. And as he, he explains in the video, that if you can just kind of take a little look around you and, and think about the things that are happening around you a little bit. Be more self-aware of opportunities that present yourself and you should change your luck. Okay, so the lesson to you guys is mostly done, but here's where I want to draw it back to. I want to go back to the idea that you're supposed to be having this conversation with people who you're trying to get a better, uh, find a better way of having communications with a person. So if it's a person who's your friend, who's very conspiratorial minded. How do you feel about having a conversation about luck with them? Like you could say, I watched this video, or I saw this, or I heard this talk, or I read this book, or read this article. And it's a way of introducing to a friend that you know that you want to kind of go there with them. Like there's there's a topic that's like they're into something really, really wild and out there. This is a way of having that, starting that conversation. So give me your takeaways of what you think about using the, the discussion of luck that we've just had with somebody who's, who wants to start? Well, I think it's, it's a good topic because it's not provable or disprovable. Like, I think the, the psychological research is sort of an angle on how humans perceive it, and I don't, I don't know that you can really disprove or disprove one. Mm -hmm. They may, you know, knock on wood, or they may have certain 
rituals that they do, that they may not even know that they do, almost. And that that might come into it. Like, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, I don't know about love, but I'm not going to give up my bracelet. And if they have done something in front of you for luck or a bracelet, that might even be a way of introducing a topic yeah. like luck. You could say, oh, you know what? That reminds me. I just saw this video about luck. And it's really interesting. And then you could kind of yeah. broach it in a way like You said, do you think that really changed anything that happened? Yeah, that. in a non-confrontational way. Do you think it really ever made a difference? <laughs> you know, and then just have this conversation about what, so what does luck mean to you? And I saw this thing, and they were talking about how it's your perception of what happened and how you remember the what happened that is actually how we frame luck. And hopefully what this will do is it will hopefully have allow you to have better conversations with the person over time. Because now you've had a conversation about something that's like Darren was saying, it's not a sacred cow. It's not like a, a core belief somebody has. It's something that's obscure and kind of ill-defined, this luck idea, that we're able to maybe have a conversation and say, you know, that's fun. And then maybe you're on the same team when you're having that conversation. You can have a friendly dialogue, hopefully defining words, maybe like theory or energy or whatever. All those words that we didn't really have a good definition of. Maybe even you could introduce, well, how would you how would you even prove luck? How would you prove bad luck? How would you prove good luck? How can you prove it? And then if you're having these, you can go as far as you want with this topic. And, and uh, this is why I'm, I picked this for the workshop today, is because I thought luck was a nice, everybody knows what it is, sort of, but they have a hard time defining it. And we all have different opinions on it. We all have examples of it. So even if luck isn't the thing that you use with your friend to kind of have good conversations with, maybe pick another topic. I don't know, what else could you do? Coincidences. Coincidences, mm -hmm. superstitions, mm -hmm. love, um, Things that are, that are, we know what they are, but we don't really... They're, they're hard to measure. Yeah, and it, it's going to mean that we have a conversation. Yeah. So you kind of get, you know, using the idea of looking at it in a more, in, looking at situations more intellectual fashion and um, trying to understand the psychology behind the way we feel about things. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a much more, so yeah, I agree. Introduction to that kind of I think that's a very good way to do it. Let me look and see if there's much more with my notes that I have on here. Hold on a second. I have it on a different screen than I have my timer, so I have to hit the different buttons. Okay. All right. So, what? Um, fantastic. Okay. So, what the takeaways are? Okay, we're going to talk about takeaways, but I'm going to finish up with this kind of stuff too. There is reading on here for you. You can do it. It's. it's um, the, the article that Deborah read is five pages long. It's a PDF. Um, it's called The Luck Factor. It was in Skeptical Inquirer magazine in 2003. It's the same place I published. And then he also has this channel called Quirkology. And maybe we can, I don't know, can you pull up Quirkology? Go to the next slide. It's his, it's, it's his um, the screenshot. And I put this on here just to remind you guys that um, this is his uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> So I've always thought, when I first started getting into the GSOW project, which is the Wikipedia project I run, is that I think optical illusions and things like that are a really great way of um, talking to people who you have, might have a problem with talking to them about things. Because optical illusions are mind tricks, right? So you're playing with somebody's mind. But if you can show an optical illusion and then you discuss how the optical illusion happens, then, then again, you might be able to have better conversations with them. So this guy is an expert on, on, um, on optical illusions, magic, all kinds of things. So if you want to check in this channel, all thousand of you that are watching right now on, on our channel, hello thousands of people who are watching right now. Make sure you look at Richard Weissman's Quirkology um, YouTube site. He's got tons of videos. They're very quick, very fast. And they're fun, and you can show them to little, to children, to adults, to whatever. So those are great. Um, and uh, you know, I wrote the Wikipedia page for as well for Quirkology. Yeah. That I wrote that page, the Wikipedia page, right. years ago. Oh, years ago. Well, it's from 2003. So what we're gonna do? <laughs> um, so 
So Darren, the first lesson that we did, which was UFOs and all that, that's going to be Wednesday and Sunday online if you want to come and join that. Deborah and Cindy's already set a slot. So you don't have to go. You don't have to come to You could, well, you could come and watch if you wanted to. Five to seven. I wanted to be able to do it to people on the East Coast without have the ability to watch it. But I'm going to be doing these over and over on Zoom because what we're trying to do is trying to find people who will come out and do lectures doing what I did. I give them the notes, I give them the slides, and they'll go and they'll do it and present it to their skeptics group. So we're trying to find people from all over the place, all over the world. We'll give them all the instructions, all the stuff. You can adapt it to your community any way you want, in whatever language you want. And you, can, you can produce these same kind of workshops. Um, so the other article you might want to read is the Skeptoids article that he has. It's How to Be a Skeptic and Still Have Friends. I think it's, did you read that one too? That's a really good article, How to Be a Skeptic and Still Have Friends. And I think that was it. So um, we're going to go eat. Or Darren's not going to go eat this sadly. But um, did you guys, and that's it. Well, Cindy's not back, so. Wait, that's it. Thank you, Cindy. Yay! Thank you for being with me. Okay, that's it. So we're going to turn it off. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. I hope you picked up on something. Did you want any swag? Because there's a whole bunch of it. Uh,